MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast, Legislative Session. Welcome in to another episode of the Extra Mile Podcast, Legislative Session, presented by the Mississippi Department of Transportation. We are uh, inching closer and closer to signing die, but uh, you know we're not there yet, so we've got another great guest for you today, another veteran of the Mississippi State Senate. Uh, we have Senator John Horn, and he took office in 1993. Senator Horn represents District 26, which includes Hines and Madison counties. Senator Horn, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be here. Appreciate you very much. Senator, just get to know, get to know you a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in politics, and kind of how you got to where you are now. <laughs> well, I, I blame it all on my father, I guess. Uh, my, my dad... Uh, uh, was a labor union leader. Uh, okay. He was the first, done the second uh, black president of a la- labor union uh, in the state of Mississippi. He rose to become number two guy at the uh, state AFL-CIO. Oh, wow. Uh, but along the way, uh, he also uh, became enamored of the work of A. Philip Randolph. Okay. And Mr. Randolph was a great leader. Uh, probably, he, 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 two things. He uh, got um, a union contract for the Pullman uh, Porter car workers on the railroad, uh, and uh, it was um, it helped to enable a lot of those guys to really get better pay and do better for their families. Uh, the problem, the second thing that that he did that was uh, really amazing, is he was the architect and the engineer for the March on Washington in 1963. Oh, wow. He spoke at, at the uh, the event, but he was responsible for all of the logistics that were necessary you know, because people couldn't stay in certain hotels as, as they were traveling to Washington. They couldn't eat in certain restaurants. There were certain gas stations you wanted to avoid. And he, he laid out and mapped out all of that. And my dad uh, was very uh, enamored of, of his work. Uh, he was more of a behind-the-scenes guy, and that's kind of like my dad. Uh, but uh, early in, in um, the late 60s, early 70s, he started to get involved in voter education, voter participation, okay. and got me involved in, in that uh, at a very early age, even before I was able to vote myself. I was helping to register people to vote. And uh, that had an impact on me. And, and then um, uh, we had, uh, fast forward, I had a good career in um, state government. I was um, involved as, as a program manager for the Arts Commission. Okay. And then became the state film commissioner. So I had the best job in the state. It was to work to bring movies in to be filmed on location here. Great job. It was the best job in, in, in the state, and okay. still is, I think. We'll have to hear more about that, yeah. And uh, then I became head of federal state programs for Governor Mabus. I, I uh, was the signatory for all of the federal funds that came into the state under the, go- the governor's signature, and, and then I, following that, became state tourism director. So you've seen some things. Uh, so I've seen, I've, seen, I've, 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 I've uh, traveled Mississippi, let me say just so. say that. I, probably better than most folks, and if there's one thing I, I would say to folks, uh, that we need to do more of as Mississippians is to travel our state. It's a wonderful state, very beautiful, and, and we have a lot of history and culture in the state that people are, ought to, to uh, benefit from. But uh, a lot of us don't, don't really know Mississippi. Uh, we stay in our own little area generally and don't sure. travel to Oxford or Clarksdale or uh, down to Natchez or the Gulf Coast, um, probably the Gulf Coast. Is the, the one exception. Everybody seems to want to go to the Gulf Coast, sure. but but you know, going to Meridian, going down to uh, Taylorsville, or or um, looking at uh, all the historical and cultural things that are in the state, I think it's very important for us to build state pride. But anyway, after I got um, uh, finished um, with tourism, uh, I was I actually was working for Governor Mabus, and then Fordyce came in after he defeated him. I worked with that administration for about three months before we separated, and uh, there was redistricting going on at, the, at that time, and I tried to get my dad to run, and uh, he said, well, I was thinking the same thing about you. You, you ought to run. <laughs> and so it, it came down to me, and, and I've been uh, fortunate to be uh, a senator for the past 30 years. That's interesting. Okay, so dad definitely brought you into it. Yeah. No doubt. No yeah, doubt. Absolutely. 
Excellent, excellent. Senator, uh, he, he's uh, he's six feet and, and uh, a half a half inch tall, and my uh, I'm, I have an older brother and a younger brother, and uh, they're considerably taller than I. Uh, so I tell everybody I got his community service genes. <laughs> I didn't get the height genes. You drew the short straw. I drew, drew the short straw. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're quick on your feet today, Will. <laughs> <laughs> it happens sometimes. Well, there, there you go. Senator, Senator Horn, we're going to talk about a variety of topics today, but uh, this is MDOT, you know, transportation podcast. Yep. So we do want to kind of ask you, about, you know, the importance of transportation. Also, you know, do you see any challenges that we have in the state of Mississippi as we uh, try to advance transportation infrastructure in the state? Well, I'll just say, say this, Paul. I um, uh, have dedicated myself uh, in my 30-year tenure thus far uh, towards economic development, uh, small business development in particular, but ec economic development in general because uh, we have to have more of it in Mississippi. And one of the critical components to having great economic development is great arteries of, of the moving of people, goods, and services through the state. So the highway program, the road and bridge program, the, um, uh, the things that, that we do with uh, interstate commerce via the air, um, our ports are all very important. And we need, really need, need to do more to put resources into those programs. It's critical to our future growth and development. Absolutely, and uh, I know you have a little bit of a technology background. Uh, we just what we wanted to bring up EVs and autonomous vehicles. Any thoughts yeah. on any thoughts on that? Uh, we we actually are going to have a bill to come up in a, a, a couple of minutes in the Senate nice. uh, on, on um, uh, uh, the um, managing the difference between a dealer and a manufacturer. Uh, of, uh, and it's all focused on EV vehicles. Uh, there are a lot of, of uh, companies that are doing EVs. They want to skirt going through dealerships in, in the state and just sell direct oh. to the consumer. And some might say that that's a good thing. Uh, others are saying that it's not such a good thing because it, it uh, may destroy the infrastructure of dealers throughout the state and impact uh, whether they can stay in business or not. But um, I think uh, EV vehicles, especially in, in the environment we find ourselves in with the uh, Ukrainian-Russian uh, debacle, uh, that uh, we are seeing more of a need as a country to go independent That's right. uh, in terms of how we use and generate energy, whether it's for our vehicles or, or otherwise. But particularly uh, our transportation, we, we, the carbon footprint that we have is much too high. We've got to, to lower it, and uh, EV vehicles is certainly one of the ways we can do that. That's absolutely right. Well, and you're talking about some of these issues that come up in legislation. You are on the uh, chair of labor uh, committee and vice chair of tourism. Uh, have any of these issues ever come up in your committee specifically or something relating to these? No, not, not really. Uh, I mean, tourism, of course, sure. we're very supportive of transportation programs there because it gets most of our visitors in, our, our highways and, and, and uh, byways. And uh, I, we probably need to do more in the, in the way of development of scenic byways in the state. A lot of states have benefited from, from uh, uh, creating more scenic byways. But we really don't, in, in, in general, get a lot of bills dealing with, with that in tourism or labor. Sure. What's, what's going on in the in Labor Committee these days? I know we got the deadline coming up today, as a matter of fact. Well, we had several bills that we... Uh, had in, in the committee, but um, we, we're in a, 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 a super uh, super Republican majority right. in the Senate and in the House, and uh, some of the bills, uh, most of the bills actually that have come to the Labor Committee, are uh, such that I, I, knowing my colleagues and knowing the process, I didn't have a whole uh, lot of chance of of, of getting through the process. So Understand. so we just let them stay in the committee. Gotcha. Anything that's really important to you, legislative-wise, that's working through right now? Well, as it relates to transportation, uh, I'm really interested in Highland Commerce Drive. And what is that, you say? It's, it's a new road, a new concept in southern Madison County uh, that uh, would uh, provide uh, for a, um, a new connector road between Lake Harbor and looping around to Highland Col Colony okay. Parkway 
which would wind up opening up a whole lot more property that should have been developed a long time ago. And the most important factor of, of that uh, is uh, a good portion of the land that would be needed to, uh, to do the road uh, flows through land owned by Tugalu College. And as an HBCU, they struggle financially, and I think that, that uh, this could be a, a great source of, of revenue and income for yeah. them where they can put that land that they're holding on to uh, so desperately to work for the institution and become an income generator. That's right, create some value for that land. Oh, absolutely, well. absolutely. And I, w I want to uh, thank MDOT uh, for all the work they're doing in Hines and Madison counties. Um, uh, there's been tremendous growth in Madison County, particularly in the central and southern part of the county. And um, a lot of that has been fueled by support from MDOT to put new roads and bridges in places where they hadn't been before, and it's opened up all sorts of commerce. I want to commend Senator, I'm sorry, former Senator and now Commissioner Simmons uh, for the, the, the work that he's been doing to try to keep our roads and byways and highways, interstates, free of litter uh, in the capital city and keeping the grass cut. Previously, we, we were challenged by not having uh, as, not, as much attention paid to uh, the um, cleanliness and, and grass cutting uh, in our capital city. And since he's been commissioner, we've seen a, a great improvement on that. The litter is another story. I mean, you can spend 500000 a million dollars in a week's time to, to clean up all the stuff, and two days later, it's back. We've got to do more to um, encourage the citizenry not to do that, not to litter, and, and to uh, see, to, to really view it as a uh, an economic development issue. Uh, when people come to Mississippi, they don't need to see a lot of, lot of trash and garbage on, on our roads and, and, and byways, and they do. And, and it, it reflects neg negatively on us as a community and, and on our um, attractiveness for uh, being able to uh, draw in more businesses. It has a, a really direct impact on that, and I, I wish we could stop it and, and uh, end it forever. I wish we had um, the answer to that. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. Uh, Senator Horn, you mentioned a project earlier, but are there, are there any other projects in uh, District 26 that you specifically want to shout out or that you have on your mind these well, days? Well, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the rehab of Highway 49 uh, in Hines County, uh, that's on the, um, uh, it's like part of a central artery that runs uh, through uh, the, the heart of Jackson, uh, ending at, at five points before it, it, it uh, it's diverted and picks up on uh, 49 South going towards Richland. But, but uh, that um, the project that we are doing uh, for Mega Evers Drive slash US 49, is a very important project. Uh, MDOT uh, has, has put about $8 million into the program to do repaving. We just got word that we've got a $25 million uh, grant from the federal government awesome. to uh, make the improvements all the way to five points from, from uh, I think, uh, County Line Road. And uh, that's going to really enhance what we're trying to do in the development of the Megger and Merle Evers uh, uh, National Monument which is at the Evers uh, family home. And so uh, as we get uh, ready to attract visitors to that site, we want them to, to uh, have a smooth ride That's right. <laughs> there and from. So uh, this, this, this money and, and uh, these resources are gonna really help that. That's, a, that's an overdue project right there. That one's need, been needing some attention. I would certainly agree. Uh, you mentioned your committees and, and uh, are now Commissioner Simmons. Uh, did you work with him much back in the day in the Senate? Did, did, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we were deskmates. Oh. And uh, for, for uh, almost 30 years, we were e either deskmates or aisle mates. Uh, we, we were either right across the aisle from one another or right beside one another. So you had to see him even if you didn't want even to. Even if I didn't, didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I commend uh, uh, Commissioner Simmons. He's a great leader. He's a visionary, and uh, he has done a whole lot to help the state of Mississippi. And as a senator, uh, when, when, especially when he was chairman of the Highways Commission Committee, rather, uh, and also in his new role as commissioner of Central District. No doubt. And, uh, you know, we're going to ask you a few, a couple of fun questions before we get out of here. 
But I just want to ask, you know, you're a, you're a Jackson State graduate. Do you want to give a shout-out to Coach Prime? It seems like he's doing a lot for the <laughs> university over there. Some toes amputated yesterday, I believe. Yeah, and I, I just heard that this morning also. So we, we wish him well on uh, speedy recovery uh, of his, um, his, his operation. And uh, this guy has done more for the state of Mississippi in the shortest period of time of it than anybody I've ever seen. He's impacted uh, folks' um, thoughts about HBCUs and whether, as an athlete, I can go to an HBCU and still have a, a professional career uh, and still develop my, my, my prowess uh, to get in as an, a, a professional in my, in my sport in the National Football League. He's also uh, done more to lift the profile of the city of Jackson and the state of Mississippi in general. And uh, we should probably uh, make him an ambassador for the state of Mississippi because he does a great job. Even if it's unformally, I think he already is. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, and the, the way he's been able to attract blue chip athletes, uh, the way he's been able to put a a, a, um, a winning spirit once again in, in one season. In, in one season. Uh, I mean, we had the first season, which was during the pandemic, which was a non-season right. as far as I'm concerned. Sorry. But uh, to amass the record that he did uh, in this, as short a period of time as he's done uh, is just amazing. And uh, he's been putting butts in seats. And that also uh, says a whole lot about his, his abilities. No doubt, no doubt. And some of those images of the stadium completely packed, I mean, that's, yeah. that's incredible. It's so cool. As many times as I've been to that stadium for different things. He, he's he's actually uh, given us a dilemma, though, uh -oh. because um, – Prior to his arrival, there, I think that no one thought that we would go back to the days of the 70s and 80s uh, when we uh, Jackson State regularly packed the, the stadium. Uh, and uh, he's, he's given folks new hope and new vigor. Uh, but he's given us a dilemma because uh, as legislators, we've been trying to figure out how we can build Jackson State a 30,000-seat stadium. <laughs> And he, he's packing it out of 58,000, so yeah. we got a problem. And yeah. those, some of those pictures are just crazy. I mean, I haven't seen a stadium that packed in, in a while. That's Absolutely. I went to the first game there. It yeah. was the first, I guess it was in the spring. It was, it was a sight to see. It's great to have Coach Prime in Jackson. Well, sir, so you spend a lot of time traveling the roads, as you mentioned. I know you got to eat. Uh, so if there's any, is there a spot that anytime you're in the area, maybe even back home in the district or somewhere, not in the district, around the state, Anytime you're in the area, whew, we've got to make a plan. Got to stop. You know, uh, the um, mahogany bar okay. uh, down in Hattiesburg. That's right. Is uh, I always have it as my, my halfway point to stop and uh, get some of that gumbo and, and uh, the, the, the uh, Cajun style food that they offer there. There's nothing I also not love good. the purple parrot, the, the more upscale version of you know Robert St. John also should be a saint in Mississippi declared a saint because I, I, I was with them last week. We had a, a tourism summit and um, the Mississippi Tourism Association day at the Capitol. And I just I said, look, man, I'm going to rub up on you because you got the Midas touch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get some, get some of that and hopefully it will rub off on me. But um, uh, there, anytime I go to Oxford, um, there are any number of restaurants uh, on the square sure. that uh, I, I like to, um, to uh, patronize. Uh, if you go up into Clarksdale, uh, you can't go to Clarksdale, you can't go to Greenville without getting some hot tamales. Absolutely. And, and the original Doe's is still the best Doe's mm -hmm. out of Greenville. I have uh, to agree. Doe's Eats Shop, where you, right. where you go in yeah. through the back door, through, you walk through the kitchen to get to your, your, your table, and it's, it's a great experience. You leave hungry, it's your fault. It's your fault. You know, they got that big old steak that uh, I don't know how many ounces it is. It's at least 20 ounces, and they say if you finish it, it's free. But sure. they, they rarely have to give anybody a free meal because you can't finish it. You have to wheel me out afterwards. Oh, no doubt. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and after asking this question, you know, all legislative session, I'm just going to go ahead and declare Mississippi the best food state in the country. Oh. We got another great answer from you as well you today. You know, it's, uh, someone once asked Morgan Freeman, uh, you can live anywhere in the world, and yet you live in Mississippi. Why is that? He said, because 
I can live anywhere in the world. That's right. I live in Mississippi. I like that answer. And and he said the the food alone is reason enough to stay here. Oh, he's he's right on there. Uh, well, Senator Horn, we uh, we really appreciate appreciate you stopping by and talking to us today. I know there's a lot going on as we head towards the end of the session. We're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up, and we want to thank our producer Katie Hornsby, our editor Drew Hall. We haven't done that in a few weeks, so give them a shout out. We also want to thank our listeners out there for listening to Extra Mile Podcast. And uh, remember that you can download and subscribe the podcast wherever podcasts can be found. You can also watch each episode. Just search Mississippi Department of Transportation on YouTube. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The handle there is at Mississippi DOT. And as always, remember to drive smart out there on Mississippi highways.